How's everyone going this morning? Is everyone well this morning? It's a nice and sunny day this morning. And uh, it's nice to be sharing with you this morning. And it's nice to see familiar faces. And my wife and I have managed to get to know some of you guys over the course of last year. And it's been a blessing. We've shared meals together. If we haven't shared a meal together, please come and see me. We've got to eat together hopefully this year as well. So, and we've gotten to know some of you, and it's been, it's been marvelous. It's been comforting for us, and we've been able to feel comfortable in Canberra National. Well, Canberra National is very special to me. In fact, it was the very first church that we came to in Canberra. And as I remember, as I was coming up the Sabbath, and I was coming up the driveway, the entrance, there was a guy wearing a cap, and he reached, uh, uh, sorry, a hat, a cowboy hat, and he reached out, and he said, hello, welcome to Canberra National. And as we walked past, and we said hello, and we walked past, and my wife said, he looks like, so he looks very familiar. Who does he look like? He looks like someone on TV. And I said, who? He looks like the man from Snowy River. And now you know, of course, that was Pastor Justin, and he greeted us, and he welcomed us that Sabbath for lunch. And so we got to meet Justin and have lunch with him. And uh, that was very nice for us and comfortable for us and welcoming for us. And just last week, we were up at his farm in Batlow, and we don't normally get out. We're not city slickers. We like to get out into the farm, and so we went up and saw him in Batlow. And we spent a day there on the farm with Justin, and we had a ball. We had an absolute ball. Hannah and I had a ball. My wife was on the tractor. She was driving the tractor. And I had to record it and show people because we don't normally drive tractors in Canberra. So that was nice to, to get her on the tractor. And Hannah and I fed the animals and went for a motorbike ride with the pastor. And I recorded that as well. And as they started the bike up, and I thought, okay, he's probably going to take it easy. You know, there's a little boy there. He started off, and then he zoomed down the road. <laughs> he gunned it down the road. And I thought, okay, hang on. I hope I'm praying for you, son, to hang on. But no, that was lovely for us to spend the time there with Wendy and Justin and his kids and some of the extended family. So um, what's that? We went up the hill, exactly, we went up the hill, and we had a wonderful time, didn't we, son? Exploring wombat holes and, and riding the horse and things like that, so that was really nice. Well, about this time last year, we arrived in Canberra, and uh, I was continuing with my study for, uh, for theology, uh, so, sorry, um, uh, for, for, uh, for, I've lost the word now, sorry, I was, and, and I was studying, sorry, for theology, and my wife was starting work at Canberra Christian School, and we thought that was an interesting time for us for transitioning from Kurenbong down to Canberra, and we thought, okay, uh, you know, this was new, a new setting for us, but as we were settling in, what we started to notice was more interestingly was the dramatic changes that was happening around us. And I'm not sure, and I'm sure you can recall some of the fires. And this time last year, the church was closed, and we couldn't worship together. And the fires came through, and we came actually on the back end of the fires. And those, that was the fires. And a couple of weeks later, we had the hail, didn't we, in the middle of summer. And we went to ANU yesterday, and we saw some of the buildings that were damaged. And a, a, a building bigger than the size of this property was no longer usable. The roof was damaged. The inside was damaged. And so the repercussions as well. I mean, we, we think about the pandemic we're in now. We have to actually sign in to church, CBR, scan our code, and come into church the places we go to now, we have to register, don't we? In fact, not only register, you have to remember where you've been for the last two weeks. If there's an outbreak, they let you know on the news, and they ask you, where have you been at such and such date, at so and so time? 
Where were you on last Wednesday at 1.30? Can you remember? Not quite. It's quite difficult for us. And so this is the world we're kind of living in now. The repercussions of the pandemic, financial crisis, global economic collapse, isolation, uprising, all this sort of thing is happening around us. Now, friends, here's the thing. Whether we're conscious of it or not, whether we're conscious of it or not, things are happening more rapidly and more rapidly than meets the eye. In fact, just this week, the uh, Swedish government passed a law Sorry, the, the, the Swedish parliament passed the law that the government is now able to take full control to enforce anything they want to, to tackle the pandemic. By force. I don't know what that means. But we need to be awake, amen? There's stuff happening around us we need as Christians to be awake. And so this morning, I want to challenge you. As mankind, we learn to adapt to things, don't we? And we just get on with 2021. My question this morning is, is this current time challenging me? Is it helping me to reflect on my relationship with Jesus? I don't know about you, but it's challenging me. So this morning, I want to look at Jesus alone. Jesus alone. Let's pray together before we start. Loving Father, Lord, we like to thank you this morning for your spirit, Lord, that is here amongst us. And we claim it in faith, Lord, that you will be with us now. And as we, Lord, look at Solar Christus, Help us to understand our need of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning I want to look at Sola Christus, and Sola Christus means Christ alone. I want you to turn your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians. Sorry, first, just testing you. First Colossians, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Colossians chapter 1. And verse 15. And we're going to read a passage about Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. If we're all there, can we say amen? Amen. We go to the Bibles in church. If we're all there, we can say amen. Sola Christus. And if you haven't got a Bible, you can look up on the screen this morning. Colossians 1 and verse 15. And we can read this morning. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Verse 16. For by him all things were what? Created, that in heaven and that on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things what? Consist. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things, in what? In all things, he may have the preeminence or the supremacy, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. Verse 20, and by him to reconcile what? All things to himself by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, 
having made peace through what? Through the blood of his cross. Verse 21, and you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. So when we look at this passage, the passage is really saying that Jesus is our salvation. Jesus is our salvation. Now, I want to go through seven points this morning. I want to go through seven points this morning that look at that a bit more in context. Let's read them. Jesus is the only image of God. He is the revelation of God. If you want to see God, you see Jesus. He is the image of God. Number two, He is our creator. Number three, He is the pre-existent one. Number four, He is creation's superglue. He holds everything together. The Greek word there is synistomy, holding things together. He framed everything together. Number five, Christ is the only head of the church, not the pastor. Christ is the head of the church. The preeminence of Christ is creation's purpose. In other words, creation was created to glorify Christ. Number seven, Christ is our Savior. Now, I want to ask you a question this morning. Is Jesus sufficient? Is Jesus sufficient? Is Jesus enough? To understand Sola Christus, we've got to go back into history. Is that all right? We're going to do a bit of history this morning. Is that your favorite subject, by the way? Maybe not. The, 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 the kids are umming and ahhing. We're going to go back into history. Let's have a look at this. This is Rome's view. Rome's view, the Middle Evil Church taught that the sacraments of communion and baptism were not merely special, but what? Necessary for salvation. The very means by which believers receive God's grace into their soul to cleanse them of their sins and free them to operate, to cooperate with God in order to what? To earn His favor. Through what? Deeds done in righteousness. So basically the church taught that the church was the dispenser of grace. Let me ask you another question. Who earns God's favor for salvation? Who earns God's favor for our salvation? Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus comes down. Jesus lives out a perfect life. He goes to the cross, and he recommends us to God. But here the church is stepping in and said, hang on a second. That's not right. The church becomes the dispenser of grace. It's through Christ alone. It's through faith that we claim the, the grace of God, isn't it? It's through faith. Through Jesus alone, we claim the grace of God. So it's through Christ alone. But now the church steps in and becomes an intercessor between God and Jesus. The church is starting to offer grace. It claims it can dispense the grace of God. Rome's view, the Roman church would then dip into what is called the treasury of merit, a kind of bank account made up of all the good deeds of all what? 
of all the saints of when? Of all time. And then apply some of the saints, what? Righteousness. Earned through what? Good works to repel, to abrogate the loved one's time in purgatory. So Rome said, we have a storehouse of grace. We have a storehouse of grace accumulated over time. And where did that get their righteousness from? From the saints. And where does it go into? It goes into a bank account. And how do you get grace? When you come to the bank account. In other words, the church has access to all the saints' righteousness. And when you receive the sacraments, you receive the righteousness through the saints via the church. Now, this teaching can still be found today. But what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about our righteousness? It's filthy rags. It's filthy rags. Let me ask you another question. Would you want someone else's righteousness? Would you want someone else's righteousness? It's his filthy rags. This again is where the church steps in and becomes a block to what Jesus is trying to do. Now, we know what Jesus did. Jesus is our prophet. He's our king. Christ as prophet, sorry, as prophet, Christ is the supreme teacher. As high priest, Christ is alone has the authority to absolve the sins of his people. As king, Christ rules in the hearts and minds of his people. So as the church was teaching this, the reformers came along and said, hang on a second, they rejected that view. There's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. So they rejected Rome's view. There's only one who can save us, and that's Jesus. There's only one place we can get grace, and that's Jesus. There's only one that can stem the wrath of God, and that's Jesus. Jesus alone. There's only one who can meet the demands of the law, and that's Jesus. Christ, our righteousness. And so there was warfare. And as the church was getting this bank account ready through the saints, the reformers were saying, hang on, Jesus alone, sola Christus. And there was warfare. The church believed in Jesus, but not the sufficiency of Jesus. He wasn't quite enough. He wasn't quite enough. So the church had to get a bank account going, and the, and the saints had to distribute their, their righteousness. And so they claim. So now we're talking about the sufficiency of Christ. Is Jesus sufficient? And we would say, yes. We would say yes. Is Jesus sufficient? Yes. Sola Christus, Christ alone. Right throughout the Bible, from the very beginning, we see the Messiah. We see the Scriptures pointing to Christ. From the, from, from the Garden of Eden, how Abel laid up an altar pointing to Jesus. Abraham laid up an altar pointing to Jesus. Isaiah said there's one coming that will be called Wonderful, Counselor, King of Kings. 
Micah said that one would come out of Bethlehem who, who would be ruler of, the, of all the nations. Everything pointed to the Messiah. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah is coming. And what does Jesus mean? Jesus is Yeshua, or the Lord God, saves. So the testimony of Sola Scriptura, word alone, is Sola Christus, Christ alone, our righteousness. Christ alone, our salvation. Is Jesus enough? We would say yes. We would say yes. Friends, I want to ask you this morning, is Jesus enough in your life? And if he is enough, is it Christ alone? Is it only Christ and Christ only? Someone was telling me the other day, hey, it was a bad year. 2020 was a bad year. 2021 will be a good year. The vaccines are coming out. They're rolling them out, and I think Australia will be getting them very soon. Is our hope in a vaccine or is it in Christ Jesus? Is it solar Christus, Christ alone, our righteousness? Notice what the Bible says in John 14. If you're there, let's just turn to John 14. And some of us know this passage off by heart. John 14. And we'll start off with verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are, what? Mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for who? For you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will what? Come again and receive who? You unto myself, that where I am, that ye may be also. And whither I go, and the way ye know. Now look at what Thomas said. Thomas is a bit of a character, and he says, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? What does Jesus say to him? Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through who? Jesus. Except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father. And now that you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Sola Christus is Christ alone. Is Jesus enough? And we would say, yes, Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Now, Sola Christus is two parts. There is the sufficiency of Jesus. Jesus is enough. But there's the exclusivity of Jesus in Jesus alone. Is Jesus enough? Yes, he is. But is he all that you have? Is he everything to you? Today's culture, in a culture that places premium on inclusiveness, tolerance, and sensitivity, solar Christus is extremely offensive. 
solar crystals exchanges inclusiveness of all ways, all religions, to the exclusivity of Christ. In other words, not every religion gets you to heaven. That's what we're saying. Not all religions lead to heaven. The exclusivity of Christ, Sola Christus. We're saying the clearest revelation of God is through Jesus, our righteousness. Motivated by love, Sola Christus is intolerance, Sovera. And lastly, Sola Christus is about an inherently insensitive gospel. Friends, it's not a common thing. You're not popular these days if you choose Jesus. But are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? The gospel disturbs the comfortable. It challenges men from everywhere to humble themselves and confess that they are sinners, that they have the infinite need. They can never be good enough to earn God's favor. It commands all men everywhere to repent of their sins and cast themselves upon the mercy of God. Of God. I don't know about you, but I hope this challenges you this year. I hope this message challenges you. To look to God for everything. Our hope lies in Christ. Amen? Our hope lies in Christ. Christ alone. Solar Christus. We cannot get to God through Muhammad. We cannot get to God through Buddha, Sola Christus. We can't get to God through Sahada, yoga, or New Age belief. Sola Christus. Christ alone is the bridge over which we approach God. Jesus. Our message yesterday was Jesus. Our message today is Jesus. Our message tomorrow is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Faith in Christ alone atones for our sins. Faith in Christ alone, which results in a desire to obey Him, and Him alone is the only path of salvation. There is no other religion that can offer salvation except through Christ Jesus. Friends, we're living in an age where the exclusivity of Christ is not going to be tolerated. Today, we're living in an age I'm not sure if you're familiar with American politics. Any Americans in here? Not quite. Half American? A quarter? Not quite. Has anyone been to America? There we go. Russell Vaught uh, was a uh, secretary of uh, the department, sorry, was a, yeah, Deputy Secretary of Management and Budget. And a couple of years ago, he came out and said this. He made a statement claiming that Islam did not have the full revelation of God. Why? Because they rejected Christ. 
they rejected Jesus. Now, friends, I'm not trying to be PC, but I'm happy with that. And so he came out and he made this revelation that they, that uh, he came out and said that their revelation is not clear because they, they, they reject Christ and they reject Christ alone. Well, how should we, how should we view other religions? How should we view other religions? How should we think about other religions? We love them, right? But religions who reject Christ are rejecting the clearest revelation of God. This is why we do evangelism, to proclaim the salvation of God in Jesus Christ alone. In Jesus, we find the only payment for sin, the offering that appeases God's wrath. And the only righteousness that is acceptable for salvation. Can you find Jesus in the Quran? Yeah, you can. You can find Jesus in the Quran. Just not the sufficiency of Jesus. They don't quite believe he's enough. In Hinduism, there's, there's room for other gods. But don't get me wrong, friends. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the only clear revelation of God is through Jesus. We've got a message to tell that is through Jesus and Jesus only. There are small entrances, yes. But our message is about Christ and Christ alone. I'm not sure if you know Bernie Sanders. You might know Colonel Sanders. Bernie Sanders was uh, another politician during the time of Mr. Vaught. And this is what he says. He said, in my view, the statement made by Mr. Vaught is defensible. It is hateful. It is Islamophobia. It is an insult to over billions of Muslims throughout the world. This country since its inception has struggled sometimes with great pain to overcome discrimination of all forms. We must not go backwards. Solar Christus. Friends, there are many ways that people can view Christ, but the clearest revelation is through His Word. Amen? Through His Word. I just want to offer you some scripture, and we're going to start to close. John 3, verse 18, whoever believes in me, in Christ, is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. John 8, 24, I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. And John 1, 23, oh, sorry, 1, 1 John 2, 23. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Friends, Scripture makes it clear to us about God. Jesus is the clearest revelation of God. Is Jesus enough? And we would say, yes. 
only in Jesus. And we would say, yes. Christ and Christ alone. This is from Max of the Apostles, page 33. In Jerusalem, there were many who secretly believed Jesus of Nazareth to be the Messiah, and many who had been deceived by priests and rulers. To these, the gospel must be proclaimed. They were to be called to repentance. The wonderful truth that who? Through Christ alone could the remission of sins be obtained was to be made plain. And it was while all Jerusalem was stirring by the events of the past weeks that the preaching of the disciples would make the deepest impression. The disciples preached Christ alone. But some didn't believe. The wonderful truth. Amen. Through Christ alone. Would make the deepest impression. Friends. We're going to be pushed. We're going to be pushed. We're going to be pressed like we've never been pressed before. We will be challenged like never before. And as my friend Chitty was sharing last week, we have to be in the boat with Jesus. Amen. Hold on to him. Cling on to him. Believe in him. Trust in him. Jesus is enough. We would say yes. Christ alone, we would say yes. There is a time that is coming upon the world that will be overwhelming, as Mrs. White puts it. Are we ready? Are we ready, friends? Is all our hope in Christ? It reminds me of a story of a young man who was a fashion de designer, and he had become popular by selling his clothing, and he had sold to places like Milan and Paris and, and New York and and. Canberra and, uh, and, and everywhere in these famous sort of fashion houses. And as he sold his fashion designs, he became quite wealthy. And he lived a crazy lifestyle because of the money he was getting. And he would go out to parties. Thank God we don't go to parties, amen? Not those kind of parties. All sorts of crazy parties lives an alternative lifestyle. And as he was going through this life, it kind of dawned on him one day that, hang on, there has to be something more. And so he started on a search, trying to find Jesus. And he went to a cafe in L.A. one day, and he was sitting down, and across the room he saw two people sitting down with a Bible open. And so he went over. He'd never seen a Bible open in L.A. And he went over and sat with them and asked them. And they told him about Jesus. And they shared with him about Jesus. And as he was listening and listening and listening, slowly and slowly his heart began to soften. And as it began to soften, he accepted Jesus. And the conviction came into his heart. And then the following week, he went to the church. The two people had invited him to church. 
And as he went along to church and he had the preacher preach the message of Jesus and Jesus alone and Jesus is the only way and Jesus is enough. Jesus is sufficient for you. And it started to convict his heart. And he, as he convicted his heart, the preacher made an appeal. If Jesus is all you want, come down today. And as the young man walked down the aisle, the Spirit of God came over him. And he felt the conviction in his heart. He realized that Jesus is enough. That Jesus is enough. And as his will was being convicted by the Spirit, he realized that Jesus was enough, but he started to realize that only in Jesus is my salvation. There is no other way. There is no other way. And he gave his life to God. Friends, is Jesus enough? And we would say, yes. Only in Jesus do we have salvation. Christ our righteousness. And we would say, yes. Let's pray. Loving Lord, is Jesus enough, Lord? Are you enough? We would say yes. And Lord, today we want to make a full commitment to you, Lord, to surrender our whole entire life to you. Lord, may the conviction of your Spirit convict our hearts today. May we not only realize that Jesus is enough, but he is the only way to salvation. Bless us. Bless each and every one of our families. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.